So last year didn't turn out as you hoped. Things took a turn. A bump. A darkened sky. And at times it may have seemed there was no hope. But here's the good news. Our God is the God of fresh starts. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Our God brings new mercies, new compassions, not just once a year, not just when things are bad, but every single morning. This year has been tough. And for many of us, things will never be the same. But we are here, breathing, maybe smiling, or crying, or shouting, or laughing. But we are here, feeling, maybe fighting, or cheering, or seeking, or grieving. But we are here, living. We are not alone. Our God is here. Our God is with us. And our God is the God of new creations. Return in 
robes of white The blazing sun Shall pierce the night And I will ride Among the saints My gaze transfixed On Jesus' face
take the time on behalf of Jess and myself right now to thank the 84 volunteers who have served our amazing church over the course of this year. It has been a year for the history books, a year where we have faced challenges and adversary, where we've had to get creative and roll up our sleeves to continue to do what we do best. And that is just to create time and space, atmospheres and events, services and gatherings, whether it be through food and music, communications and hospitality, programs and small groups, finances and leadership, all which allow people to walk into God's presence in unique ways and connect with Jesus. Every church has a lot of moving parts, with many people involved and invested using their gifts and talents to serve God. And to maintain a form of unity and balance across it all, I want to say, is no easy feat. Yet because of all of you, man, we don't have to do it alone. Even more, we do it with God's strength and with His sustaining grace. As I take the time right now, know that it is truly a privilege to serve alongside you all, making eternal differences in the lives of families and individuals right across our community. So I want to thank you all, every single one of you who have stepped up and served 84 incredible people who love Jesus and love our community. We've been able to see great things this year with huge impact, with many lives being changed, challenged and touched. See, my heart is encouraged and stirred to think of the impact that we can have next year and the years to come as we continue to build God's kingdom here. We were born for such a time as this and together with Christ, his light will continue to shine hope and life to all mankind. So thank you all. Hi everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022 and welcome to another of our Summer Sunday gatherings. I pray that wherever this finds you, that you are well and we just want to wish you a very, very happy New Year. Hey, things are looking a little bit different behind me as we venture into the new year, new beginnings, and we look at a sermon series called A Future and a Hope. I am so excited about this sermon series and feel it is such a timely reminder of God's goodness to us, the future that he has planned for us, and the hope that we can find in him. Just a reminder, don't forget to continue registering, get involved and be a part of these gatherings as they continue for the month of January. So I want to hand you over to Pastor Nathan Finlay this morning as he shares a testimony of the future and the hope that he has found in Jesus.
So far in my 20 years of full-time work, I've found myself in a range of interesting jobs. I started with the engineering industry as an apprentice foundryman and then became a qualified foundry tradesman in metal casting and technology. Moving on from there, I became a deckhand on a commercial crayfishing boat, then moved to the retail and sales area in a skateboarding shop, then into the food industry manufacturing yogurt and cheese. From there, I went back to foundry work and now I'm pastoring here at Thames Elam. And over that time, man, I've learned a lot and continue to learn every single day. Yet one of the biggest lessons I've learned has come from what appeared to be a negative outcome. You see, I was made redundant twice as the businesses I worked for went into liquidation with next to no warning. The first time was when I was in the retail store in Auckland, and the second time was uh, when I was in the engineering foundry here in Thames. Both times came as a shock with news telling me the doors are closing and there's nothing to turn up to tomorrow. For those who have experienced this, you know the feelings I felt, the waves of emotion rolling over you, and it's this private wrestle as you internalize it before sharing the news with loved ones, those who look to you to provide and bring stability to the home. See, each case for me was unique. The first time I was newly married, Jess, my wife, was studying at the time, rent was expensive in Auckland, and we were living week to week. The second time, we were pregnant with our first child, Adelaide, and we had a new mortgage to worry about. But what I've noticed is it's interesting how situations try to dictate our responses and feelings. And when a negative situation like redundancy comes along, it's all too easy to feel stressed and incredibly anxious about things. Things such as, where's the next paycheck going to come from? How am I going to pay for this and that? You start to realize that this is going to drastically change your short-term plans. Suddenly I'm unemployed. I have to find a new job. I'm going to have to start over and learn new skills. Then all the pressures of starting a new workplace, making friends, fitting in and all of that. But often what comes as a shock in life is part of what God is putting into motion just for you. To put it simply, it's a door or a gateway closing right in front of you. And at first, all you see is the way forward is closed. It's blocked. There's nowhere to go. No longer are things going to remain the same. It takes time to realize things are going to be okay and that it's actually a part of God's plan. By the second time I was made redundant, I adjusted quicker, coming to the realization that I was on the cusp of stepping into something new, stepping into exactly what God wanted and had prepared for me. And in this case, this time around, it was pastoring. You see, a door closing only leads to one thing, and that's a new door opening. You see, as we find ourselves living in these unprecedented times, it is somewhat similar to the closing of a door or the beginnings of a new one opening. On top of that, we now find ourselves starting a brand new year, except this time around, it feels like the life of it is getting sucked out before it even gets going. Yes, it is a challenge. Yes, it is uncomfortable. Yes, there are different opinions and different roads leading forward. And all of this brings back these similar feelings that I got from being made redundant. But nevertheless, there is a way forward. You see, no one really likes change, but we must change in order to move forward. And I think about the words of Jesus in John 16:33 a lot in the light of the days that we're currently living. He says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. As Christians, we should expect continued tension with an unbelieving world that is out of sync with Christ and the gospel. Yet at the same time, we should expect our relationship with Christ to produce peace and godly comfort because we are in sync with him. In the earlier verses of John 16, Jesus is talking about his death and resurrection with his disciples. He says in verse 20, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. What an incredible contrast between Jesus' disciples and the world. And as we know, the world's values are often the opposite of God's values. It goes on to say, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Verse 21 and 22, Jesus continues and says, As a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy. Her child is now born into this world. 
So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away that joy. Hallelujah. Here Jesus was summing up his words before being arrested and killed, and in his heart were these very words in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. In short, Jesus is saying to his disciples, and to us today, to take courage. Take courage in spite of the inevitable struggles you are facing and that you will face. Can I say to you today, you are not alone. He is right there in the trenches with you. In every step, in every breath, every mountain that needs to be climbed and every valley that must be trudged through. For leaders, he is with you in every decision. He is with you in every wrestle, every sacrifice you must make. Take courage in spite of the struggle, for we know as it is written, the ultimate victory has already been won. So with that victory, we can claim the peace of Christ in the most troublesome times. Yet one day we will truly rejoice. Our grief will turn to pure joy. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, because in him we have a future and a hope. God's promises will be fulfilled. See, in recent years, it's become a bit of an end-of-year tradition for Jess and I to walk up to this rock that's tucked away on the hill on the Coromandel. And when we get there, we take in the last glimpse of light of the year. You see, years back as a youngster, my Uncle George affectionately named this rock on the hill the Dragon's Tooth. And it stuck. And now I love telling stories to my kids, which rouses imagination and creativity of, of how that tooth got there and how big the dragon must have been. You see, the walk is one that starts and ends along the water's edge, soaking up the beauty as the light begins to change. I love climbing through the old, rugged and twisted Pahutakawa trees along the beach before you start up the steep hill, chasing the fence line all the way to the top. Once at the top, what breath you have left is taken away by the vastness of space and beauty. There is something special in watching the last light of the year, watching the sun go down on the last 365 days, the end of a chapter, the closing of a door or a gate of what has been. There's time to reflect, time to gather thoughts and lessons learned. All of this with the incredible hope, knowing that in a few short hours, the sun again will rise. It will rise on a new day, on a new year, a new start. Yes, there can be varying amounts of time and darkness and uncertainty between the closing and opening of doors, but it's in these times where we are stretched and strengthened, maturity is developed, patience is learnt, and God's timing ultimately trumps everything. As I look out with awe, beauty and peace fill my heart through my eyes. I am filled with a sense of hope and excitement for the future, of the days to come with more moments to share more opportunities to embrace, more challenges to overcome. In moments like this, I have no fear. For if he has created such beauty and awe for us all to simply watch and enjoy, how much more does he have us held close in his hands, safe and secure, despite the way things play out around us? It's in this knowledge I know my future is secure, my hope is sure in the power of his mighty name, the name of Jesus. John chapter 16, 33, Jesus spoke, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. How good is it to be reminded of the hope and the future that we have in Jesus? I pray that as you've heard the words this morning and the worship that has been sung, that your heart has been ignited of this promise and this hope that we have in Jesus and that you are getting a little bit more excited for all that 2022 has in store. Don't forget 
to register for next week's gathering. And if you are watching from home this morning, I really encourage you to register and be a part of what Thames Elam is doing over the summer break. We have had such awesome time in fellowship and meeting together. So be a part of that. Be a part of what God is doing. And I just pray this morning over our church family that you are blessed, that you enjoy some more sunshine, and we will see you next Sunday.